Hi everyone, welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to write any quadratic equations in standard form. So we know that quadratics are usually written in this form. So you have some f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. So that's usually how the quadratics are written. But now you wanna transform this into the standard form. So the standard form is going to be f of x is equal to a, a times x minus h squared plus k. So that's the form we're looking for. You wanna somehow take the quadratic and by using the method of completing square, you wanna write it in this form. So let me give you a couple of examples how to do that. So consider this function. So say f of x is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 1. And we, were, we want to complete the square so that we can write it in this form. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, rewrite my function. So I have f of x, and I'm going to leave a space is equal to, and I'm just going to group x squared minus 4x into a parenthesis and leave the constant term alone. So you wanna group it this way. Now you go ahead and complete the square. So when you complete the square, you take half of the linear term, which is negative four in this case. So we take negative four, half of it, and then we square it. That's the number we add both sides of this equation. So this will give us negative two, and we square it, we get four. So I'm gonna go ahead and add four inside the parentheses and also add four to the left side of this equation. And now we are ready to put all of these together. So now we have on the left side, we have f of x plus four. And on the right side, we have a perfect square. So we have x minus two all square and plus one, one is still out there. And last step is to solve for f of x. So by subtracting four from both sides, we have our f of x is equal to x minus two square minus three. And that's the standard form. Some textbook, they also call this the vertex form because once it is in this form, you can write down the vertex. So from the standard form, we know the vertex of this quadratic is going to be h comma k. So because I have my function in standard form, I can also write down its vertex, which will have x coordinate as two and y coordinate as negative three. So h is two and k is negative three. So that will be the vertex for this given quadratic. Okay, now let's do another example. So you can practice a little bit more. Now let's take a look at another function. So this is our example two. So say f of x is equal to, so let's do three x squared plus 12 x minus seven. And our goal is to write this in standard form, which is f of x is equal to a times x minus h squared plus k. So that's the standard form we want to write this equation in. So let's go ahead and complete the square. So we have f of x on the left side. We're going to leave a space equal. Now on the right side, we're going to group 3x squared plus 12x together, leave negative 7 outside. So, but now we can't complete the square because there's one more step we need to do, which is to make the coefficient of x squared to be a one. Since it's a three, we really have to force out that coefficient from the first and the second term so that our coefficient for x squared is one. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna force factor this. I'm gonna pull out a three from the quadratic term and the linear term. So if I do that, I have three times x squared. And then if I pull out a three from 12, I will be left with 4x, because 4 times 3 is 12. 
and then we leave a space. Minus 7 still outside, and we have our f of x on the left side. Now we're ready to complete the square. So we take half of our b term, which is 4, and then we square it. And that's going to be 2 squared, not 4. So we're going to add 4 on the right side. But we have to be careful because overall, we didn't add 4. We added 3 times 4. So the 3 is affecting what goes inside the parentheses. So that's why we also need 3 times 4 on the right side. So we need to add 3 times 4 on the right side as well. Now that will keep the equation balanced. Now we can continue the process. So we have f of x plus 12 is equal to 3 times the perfect square, which will be x plus 2. And I still have minus 7 out there. And then to solve for f of x, we're going to go ahead and subtract 12 from both sides. And that will give us our standard form. f of x is equal to 3 times x plus 2 square minus 7 and 12. That would be 19. So there you have it. That is the standard form of this function. So just like what we wrote down on the side, on the corner on the right side. Here you can also write down the vertex. So the vertex would be negative 2 for the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate, negative 19. And there is more you can answer for this quadratic. But the purpose of this video, we're just going to focus on completing square, writing a quadratic in standard form. Let's do one last example. So take a look at this function. Say f of x is equal to negative 2x squared minus x plus 1. And again, we want to complete the square so we can write f of x is equal to a times x minus h squared plus k. So we want to write f of x in that form. Okay, so again, we're going to rewrite. So we have f of x, leave a space, is equal to, again, group the linear and quadratic term, negative 2x squared minus x, leave a space, and leave the constant term outside. Well, now again, the idea is the same as the previous problem. We want to make sure the coefficient of x squared is 1. So we're going to force out that coefficient to make it a 1 from the first and the second term. So I'm going to force out a negative 2 from the quadratic and linear term. So that means I'm going to have x squared for the first. The second one looks a little weird because I want to make sure when I redistribute negative 2, we have negative 1 for x. So I'm going to need a positive 1 half x because if you redistribute, negative 2 times a half is negative 1. And check, that's what we want, because that's the coefficient of x initially. Okay, so now that we have the correct coefficient for x, let's go ahead and continue. So, and uh, we still leave our constant one outside. And now we're ready to complete the square. So now we're going to take half of our b term, which is one half, take half of it and then we square it. So one half of half, <laughs> that's weird to say, but that's one fourth, and then we square it, that's going to be one over 16. So we're going to add one over 16 inside the parentheses, but overall we added negative two times one over 16. So we also need that term to be on the left side. So we're going to add negative 2 times 1 over 16. So the equation on both sides is balanced. So now we're ready to write this as a perfect square. So we have f of x minus 2 over 16, which will simplify, is equal to negative 2 times x plus, uh, this is 1 fourth because it's b over 2, all square plus 1. And now lastly, I'm going to solve for f of x. 
and also 2 over 16, that will simplify. So I will do that on the side. So now we go ahead and subtract 2 over, add 2 over 16 to both sides to finally solve for x. Solve for f of x. So we have f of x is equal to negative 2 times x plus 1 fourth all square. And then we have 1 plus, well, keep in mind, I'm going to simplify 2 over 16. 2 over 16 is just um, 1 over 8. So we're really doing 1 plus 1 over 8. And now we need to add these numbers by using common denominators. So finally, our f of x is equal to negative 2 times x plus 1 fourth square. And uh, so 1 plus 1 eighth would be 9 eighth. So this is plus 9 eighth. And that is the standard form. Okay. And from here, let's go ahead and go one extra step. Write down the vertex. So the vertex is negative 1 fourth as the x coordinate, and y coordinate is 9 eighth. Okay. All right. So this is it. I hope. The idea of writing f of x in standard form makes sense.